Okay, okay, you've asked me enough times now. I'll show you all my secrets. What is up people, Donna here, and today we're gonna be talking about how I created these photos where the objects are floating. No Hogwarts diploma required. A few videos ago, I made a review for the new Sigma 56 millimeter, and I needed a thumbnail image. So I got out my camera and the lens, and I held that lens in front of the camera, and I thought, what if I wasn't holding it? What if it wasn't just sitting there? What if it was floating off of the desk? Then I realized that I had just created a whole bunch of extra work for myself, but it was too late, I had already had the cool idea, and now I had to figure out how to do it. Now there are a few ways that I've seen that people make objects float in photos. One of which is you can actually tie a string around it and hold it up and then erase the string in Photoshop after, but I didn't have any string and it kind of seemed like a lot of work. You can turn up your shutter speed and toss the object. Like when you see all those photos on Instagram where people have an object levitating over their hand, I'm guilty of doing this as well. Well, they just look so cool. But I didn't want my hand in the shot and I definitely wasn't gonna toss this lens. You can also take a photo of the background and take a photo of the object and then cut the object out in Photoshop and levitate it. But I'm really bad at cutting things out in Photoshop. It just wasn't gonna work. I needed something easier and I needed something that I could do with just what I had laying around me. And I think what I came up with is pretty cool and pretty easy. But instead of just telling you how I did it, we're actually going to create a photo where we levitate this video vintage Pentax film camera, and I'm gonna take you through every step of the way to show you just how easy it is. Here's what you're gonna need. A camera to shoot the photo with. Yes, you can just use your phone if you want. A tripod to hold the camera steady, and some kind of photo editing software. I'm gonna be using Adobe Photoshop, and a quick disclaimer, I am not good at Adobe Photoshop. I have like three tricks I can do, and that's about it, but those three tricks get me by. So before you guys go too crazy telling me how bad I am at Photoshop and how this could have been done way easier, let's use the comment section to add suggestions on how you might have done this or how you might have made it easier so that everyone can benefit from it. Let's keep it positive, people. All right, let's get this photo. So as you can see, I have my scene set up. I've got the wooden desk and I've got the white background. I've got an overhead light that I really like. I think it looks really good for product shots like this. But the actual setup and the scene itself isn't super important. What's gonna be important is the execution of it. So if you're just shooting with natural light or whatever's in the room, this can still work. You don't need a fancy light or any kind of fancy setup for this. So I've got the camera that I'm gonna take the photo on right here. It's set up, it's leveled, it's got its nice framing and everything. Thing. It's basically looking how I want it. I've dialed in all my settings. I'm currently at ISO 100, F1.7, and at 1 250th of a second. And there are two reasons why I'm shooting at such a high shutter speed. One is to balance the light that I've got going on in the room right now. And the other one is because there's going to be a little bit of shake when we get into the levitating part, and I want to try and freeze that motion. Okay, so here's the big reveal for how I got the shot. It's actually made up of two separate photos. The first photo is of me holding the object on the right hand side and the second photo is of me holding the object on the left hand side. Then we combine these two photos, get rid of the hands, and we're good to go. Now the key to this is that I have grids turned on on my camera so I can see exactly where the camera is in the frame and I want to try and keep it as close to the same as possible because the more we have to move each shot the harder it's going to be to put these together. So I've turned on my three Three by three grid and I'm just going to try and line up the camera right in the center in the same place for both shots. Another really important thing is that you're going to want to be in manual focus mode and the reason for this is because you want the focus to be exactly the same for both photos. So I'm going to flip over to manual focus, get the focus for my first shot, that's when I'm going to try and hold it there, switch over to the other hand and get the second shot. So while holding it I'm going to try and make sure that I get focused in on the Pentax logo. I think I really like it tilted that way. So I'm gonna check my focus one more time. Okay, so I'm gonna try and remember a couple of things. First of all, the center of the lens is right in the center of my frame. The top right corner of the camera, I'm gonna kind of memorize that spot. It's just on the top line and just inside the first right line. And then I'm gonna snap my first photo. Now, while moving the camera as little as possible, I'm gonna grab it on the other side. And I'm 
gonna hold it there, get it back in that same spot, and then snap the second photo. Another thing that you can do is just make sure you get a couple of different versions. Go back, review what you have, try and get the best couple that you can, the most accurate two. So I'm gonna take a couple of backup shots really quick here, and then we're gonna hop over into Photoshop. This one's a little tough because this camera is actually pretty heavy, so holding it out at the end of my arm is a little tough, but I think I got a couple of shots that are close enough. So let's hop into the computer and get these things edited up. Okay, so I've pulled the photos into Lightroom to start with so that I can compare them, pick the ones I wanna go with, and then make some minor adjustments. I've got these two photos, which I think are going to be close enough to make this work. You can see that they're not perfect. They're not perfectly lined up yet, but we're gonna do some things in Photoshop to help that. If you don't know how to pull a photo from Lightroom into Photoshop, all you have to do is highlight the photo and hit Command E or Control E, and it'll choose to edit in Photoshop. You can also right click and there's an option that says edit in Photoshop. So what I wanna do, I'm gonna to go to the one with the left hand, I'm gonna double click on background and just hit enter so that it creates a layer out of it, an editable layer. I'm gonna hit Command A to make a selection of the whole thing, Command C to copy. I'm gonna go over to the other one, double click and hit enter so that it creates an editable layer. And then I'm also just gonna hit Command V so that it pastes the other layer. So now I've got the two layers side by side. I'm gonna take layer one and turn down the opacity to about 36, 37% so that I can see how they line up. And I'm gonna take the move tool so that it gives me the ability to move and I'm gonna see how well I can get these things lined up. I think that's pretty good. So now that I've got the two lined up, what we need to do is take our top layer and delete the parts that we don't want. The reason that I like this method is because it actually keeps the shadow underneath it, which is what kind of makes it feel like a real levitation. So what I'm actually gonna do is create a layer mask and brush out what I don't want. So I'm gonna select layer one and I'm gonna go down here and click on the layer mask icon. It's gonna create a layer mask and I'm going to hit B to get my brush tool. I'm gonna to crank up the size. Now currently you can see the layer mask is all white, which means that it's all showing. So we can either go over here and change this to black or we can hit X and it'll switch those. I wanna make sure I go to my brush and I turn the hardness down all the way because we want nice soft edges and then I can start to paint in. And you can see it's creating black in the layer mask and it's deleting that part of it. Now you can see because of the softness, it's actually bringing in a tiny little bit of the other picture here and I don't want that. So I'm actually gonna make my brush a little smaller, hit X again and then get rid of that. X again, continue getting rid of the parts that I don't want. I'm gonna go around the lens here, make sure that none of the lines look super weird. And if we zoom out, we pretty much have a picture. So I'm gonna do the typical four by five Instagram crop, and then I'm gonna add a curves layer so I can slightly mess with the lighting a little bit. And voila, it's done. We officially have a floating vintage Pentax film camera. So that's how easy it is. As always, I wanna turn it over to you guys. Do you have a different way that you like to do these levitating floaty photos? Flotos? Leave a comment and let me know. Let's start a conversation. If you had fun and you learned something, make sure to hit that like button. It really does help. If you wanna be friends, click the circle, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. If you wanna watch another video, there's one right here. I think you'll really like it. And I'll see you next time.